Hello once again, it is James from James Films, and today I'm gonna walk through this really fun render right here. The total time for this one was about an hour and 15 minutes, a really quick one uh, that I just worked on this afternoon. So this is a really simple process, basically all took place in Blender and Photoshop with just a bit of reference searching online. I kind of wanted to model something off of Santorini, the really cool uh, Greek town with some really nice bright white and blue uh, colors in there. Just wanted a nice vibrant image. So for this one, again, I always start with super simple shapes here. I just created very quickly a stairs, um, a set of stairs using an array modifier. And then you can see me just extru extruding some parts here to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic with a little bit of smooth edges on the stairs uh, and adding in a, a side wall there to kind of fill out the scene. I use an, another cube here to create that window, bevel the sides of it just to make it look a little bit smoother and nicer for the scene. And then I always like to append images, or rather objects, from other scenes that I've already created just to speed up my workflow here. So I take two curtains from another scene that I've previously worked on that I think will work very well and tie this piece together. So these are nice and flowing curtains, and what I can do is just use the proportional editing mode to kind of get them to stick well on the surface, on that plane on the bottom. I usually like to start an EV when I'm lighting things, just so I don't have the constant refreshing of cycles. It kind of makes it just a little bit more streamlined for me. You can see once you move over to cycles, you start having the kind of updating of your screen every second you change something in the viewport. So I like to start with EV, and I always start with an HDRI, and then power the directionality of that HDRI with a sun lamp in the same direction. So that kind of adds really nice shadows. The sun lamp specifically adds the really nice shadows. And the HDRI adds in the colors that kind of make it look a bit more realistic. So you don't just have one color bouncing off the surface of your objects. So you see me building up the rest of the scene here. I'm adding in some particle systems using some uh, photo scanned objects originally from Quixel. And then I also have some from the add-on um, scatter from the Blender Market. Really great add-on that I love using for a lot of my scenes. Just adjusting some parameters here once again with the different scattered elements, lots of different kinds of grass and flowers and things to fill out the scene and make it look a little bit more realistic. And before I actually added all these in, you can see I was actually displacing the terrain using a inflate brush. I love that brush when I'm making these terrain modifications to make it look a little bit more realistic, adding some bumps and hills and, and divots and ridges. And then I'll sometimes take a second pass over with a smooth brush or a crease brush to kind of add in either some rivers or some little cuts and different things, different imperfections to make my landscape look much more realistic. Trust me, all these little details are the key to realism with your scenes. If you just have a perfectly flat plane, it's not going to look real because it's just going to look like too perfect. Uh, just perfectly rounded edges often don't look real as well. So sometimes I'll actually take in to sculpt mode with some of my arches or windows and add in just a little bit of cutting or a little bit of creasing just to make it a little bit deformed and take it more into the real <laughs> kind of looking environment. So here I'm just messing with some textures. I am using, once again, textures from Quixel Mixer uh, to just texture out those walls. And then now I'm on Unsplash looking for reference images, mainly for the background here, but also just kind of for my own reference just to see the kind of color palette I wanna work with to fill out the rest of my scene here as I finalize and lock in the lighting and atmosphere of my scene. So once again, work smarter, not harder here. If the background is not really the focal element, I don't really want to spend as much time modeling it. So I actually just bring in an image as a plane for those couple buildings that you see in the background. There's really no point for me to spend a lot of time modeling and texturing those when I can just add them into the background very quickly. All, took, that took all of like 30 seconds to do. And then once again, I'm kind of looking for different objects here to append from other scenes. I've got a really nice um, crown molding thing that I have from another scene I've worked on that I can add to the top and bottom of my scene and just kind of edit very quickly and make look nice, kind of add those extra details to the, the ceiling and to the base of the floor. All these little details count again. You might not even notice it at first glance. It's probably not even a secondary, but it's maybe even a tertiary element of my scene. Um, but it's just something that helps and makes it look a little bit more like an actual place that you live in. My computer kind of froze out there since I'm rendering a very intense volume that I now have added to my scene. You see that huge cube there in my scene. And for this, this just kind of adds in that last little bit of atmosphere. I like to use the principled uh, volume node and just to, uh, plug that right into my volume output for my material. You can see it's really running slowly here just because there are so many particles and this huge volume in my scene. So often what I'll do is just turn off the particles. You can see it just turned off all the grass for the scene just to make my viewport run a bit quicker. And I've also turned off the volume as well just as I add in some last details. So I wanted to add in a focal element. I kind of thought that there's something missing and there's a lot of empty neutral space in the top half of the scene, maybe even like the top two thirds of the scene. 
So I kind of wanted to balance that out by adding in a tree from another render. Uh, so I have that in. I also have a, a stool here that's been photo scanned from Quixel, and I've got a nice little coffee cup. And these are also all included, the coffee cups and all those things, they're all included for free in Blender. I've talked about this in another video, but there's a great add-on called Blender Kit that you can enable if you go into your add-ons tab. And there's tons of free objects and materials that you can use uh, in your scene. So those are nice little props and stuff that just kind of fill out the extra little details so you don't have to model those. One eternity later. This render actually took a couple hours since there's so many particles and volumes to deal with. But after that, I brought it into Photoshop and here's where I just experiment with different colors, different looks. I like to use different brushes to kind of mask parts of the image out that I don't want to affect as much. So for that tree, I found that when I was starting to add adjustment layers onto it, it got really dark and the branches and the leaves were kind of starting to fade away into oblivion. So I wanted those to read uh, well enough that you were able to actually see that those were branches or leaves or pine, pine needles rather on this tree. Uh, again, just tiny little details here that you might not even notice, like little dodge and burning on that stool or other parts of the image. And it just kind of carries a lot of, of weight once you actually look at the overall picture. And I always like to have in the top right corner of my Photoshop this navigator view, which is uh, showing more of a thumbnail view. So when you're working in kind of this full screen mode, or if you're zooming into parts of the image, it's kind of easy to lose sight of the overall picture. So it's nice to have that, that overall shot kind of zoomed out, like you'd see it on an Instagram feed or on a website in a small part of your portfolio. So this is the final image. Once again, this took about an hour, 15 minutes to make a really quick, fun render. So thanks for tuning along. I, I love walking you guys through these renders. Hopefully you find it helpful to hear my process a bit. And let me know in the, the comments what other kinds of tutorials or videos you'd like to see. And be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one here.